Christopher Coleman entered the world without a heartbeat or any vital signs of life. Doctors pronounced him dead, turning back to his mother so they could deliver his twin sister. When she cried, Christopher cried, and they discovered that he was indeed very much alive. Mother told my mom I was at least 15 minutes without any autism to my brain. And as a result, I will never move, never walk, never talk. They tell my mom to take me, put me in the institution and forget that I was even born. My mom not only was a believer, but she believed that God had a plan for my life. Without the ability to communicate, Christopher spent a good deal of his childhood feeling trapped in his own body. In school, no one made any attempt to teach him. So at night, he sneaked away with his sister's books and taught himself to read. Eventually, he tested above grade level and went on to graduate from high school with honors. But I went to church on my life. But I didn't come to no Christ until I was 19 years old. Um, it was then that I found myself reflecting back on my life and realizing that my life would be challenging. And I, I really wanted to make it. I needed to know Christ. And I went to my mom, and she, I asked her one day, how did you do it? How did you raise seven kids on your own? And she said, I didn't. It was Jesus. And that man I knew, I needed him in my life. But going into college, I'm at LSU, everything is great. Um, I'm, I'm about 19 years old, and um, I hear God tell me to move, to marry a job on my own. And I'm like, you want me to do what? He like, move to marry a job on, on your own. And I'm like, God, come here. And that moment I thought, I told God, look at me, look at my head, listen to my voice, look at my feet. I can't do what you're asking me to do. And he said to me, I don't have to look at you. I made you. I made your hands, I made your feet, I made your voice. And it, it, that conversation that I really believe all my life going to be speaking to me. I just never really recognized it until that moment that God been walking beside me all these years. I got a letter from Southern Polytechnic State University. And I was like, okay, I'm going to Georgia. So, graduated from that, the only college graduate in my whole family. Oh my God, God do it, a communication degree, but by no means that I think I will be doing what I'm doing now with that degree. But so it was about a year when he really said, you know, I called you to share your story all over the world. And I'm like, me? With my voice and my disability, the way I am? And he was like, yeah, yeah. 
A friend set Christopher up with his first speaking engagement, withholding any details. Faced with thousands in the audience, Christopher poured his heart out and could see his story moving the people. I remember the faces. I remember the tears. I remember that one lady. She came in the room depressed. You can see it on her face. But when she left, it was like a whole new person. And I knew from that moment forward, this it was. This it was. Why you created me the way you have? So I can communicate to other people how good you are. Uh, that's the first time I think that I really begin to embrace who I am. You know, when you have a disability, there's so many, there's so many things around you that say that you're not good enough. And in that moment, I felt God saying, not only are you good enough, but you're perfect for me.